Absolute Carnage number no. 1 was published a few days ago and witnessed Eddie Brock bonding to the Venom symbiote to confront God Carnage. Written by Donny Cates and penciled by Ryan Stigman, this book is one of the best stories I've read in a while. The book opens with Eddie Brock and his son Dylan who still does not know that Eddie is his father. Walking towards Times Square, Eddie explains that the symbiotes were created by the god of darkness called Null in order to purge all life from the universe, but they turned on their creator and imprisoned him at the core of an artificial planet. Eddie tells Dylan that when a symbiote is separated from its host, it leaves a piece of itself called a codex behind, and that Cletus Cassidy has been resurrected by a symbiote worshipping cult and is hunting everyone who has ever bonded to a symbiote, in order to harvest their codexes and free Null from his prison. Eddie tells Dylan that they need to keep a low profile, only to enter Times Square and see his face plastered on every screen, labeling him public enemy number one for the murder of Lee Price and several other inmates at Rikers Island. As Dylan asks Eddie why he would do such a thing, Eddie states that Carnage is framing him. Spotting a man in a trench coat following them, Eddie grabs Dylan and runs for the subway. He says that they need to get on the train as soon as possible, but a man standing behind him and reading the Daily Bugle lowers it to reveal himself as Cletus Cassidy. He shoves Eddie and Dylan into the train tracks. As the train draws nearer, Eddie hugs Dylan and braces for death, but just before it reaches them, the man in the trench coat leaps onto the tracks and reveals himself as the Venom symbiote in disguise, derailing the train and shielding them. As Venom rebonds to Eddie, it notes that he is resisting bonding to it. The symbiote insists that they need to be together again. The police officers then hold Venom at gunpoint and tells him to step away from Dylan. Eddie tells the officers that he has no intention of hurting anyone, but they do not believe him. Suddenly, the train explodes, and Carnage emerges with a white spiral on its forehead and a white dragon emblem on its chest looming over them, peeling the symbiote away to reveal the face of Cletus Cassidy, who says that they should catch up. The symbiote urges Eddie to be careful, since Cletus has bonded to the Grindel symbiote. Venom punches Carnage as hard as he can, but he is not phased, gloating that he is a god now, and knocks Venom away. Carnage beats Venom some more, with Eddie thinking that he has never been hit that hard before. Venom says that Eddie is badly injured, urging him to get away so that it can focus on healing him. Carnage pins Venom to the ground, demanding to know who Dylan is, before remarking that it does not matter since he is going to die anyway. As Carnage tries to rip the Venom symbiote off, Eddie grabs Carnage's lower jaw and shouts at him to burn. He grabs the third rail and conducts the electricity into Carnage, destabilizing him. As they flee, Eddie looks over at Cletus' undead corpse as the Grindel symbiote rebonds to him. Speaking through Eddie, the Venom symbiote tells Dylan that it placed him into a coma so that it could focus on healing his injuries, and that he will be okay. As they reach an apartment building, the symbiote notes that they have arrived and wakes Eddie back up. Knocking on the door of apartment 616, Eddie is greeted by Randy Robertson. Noticing Eddie's condition, he calls for Peter Parker, who is in the middle of changing into Spider-Man in this amazing artwork by Ryan Stigman. So that was the first part of this incredible story. Stay tuned for part 2, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thanks for watching. And have a nice one.